Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Twit Specials is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. I'm Father Robert Ballasier, the digital Jesuit, here for Twit TV at CES 2014, the first event of the greatest geek on earth. As you expect at CES, there would be a lot of 4K. No 4 L, M, N, or O, but 4K. And when you think of 4K, you think of thousands of dollars. So I'm going by the Lenovo booth, and I see this monitor, and it's 4K, and I ask our buddy here how much this is, and he says... $7.99. Wow. It's pretty incredible. So yes, it's a 28-inch 4K display. The 2840M has actually multimedia speakers, multiple digital input, so it's a beautiful display designed for professional designers and any, really anyone who wants to take advantage of the, of the glowing content that 4K provides. Now is this out now? Or? It's going to be available in March time frame of this year. And now this guy, we're moving up a notch. Yeah, so now what we've done is taken the same display and I've, I've provided 10 finger touch. So now I have a... Wait, well, these two monitors are the same size? Same size, so 28 inch. Okay. Uh, but I've gone more towards the, a, a at-home monitor. So I've got a 4K 10-finger uh, touch display. So here I'm showing some content. The beauty of this monitor is when I unplug my devices, I end up with Android operating system left behind. So now I have uh, Android ecosystem, if I drop back there. So now I have a full Android ecosystem. So we're going to be running uh, NVIDIA Tegra's latest with Android 4.4 KitKat. So now that any app that I've, I've loaded uh, that it comes in from the Google Play Store that's scaled for tablet is FHD. It'll actually scale up to 4K. So let's play uh, one of my favorites, Angry Birds Star Wars. How many 4K apps are there so far? Do you know? Any idea? Well, there are no 4K oh, no, apps, okay. but, but tablet apps are on the uh, Google Play Store. So you have any, any um, app that's optimized for tablet will scale up to 4K display. So the beauty of it is I, I can play not only my, my 4K content, but I, I can also play any app uh, that own, own this 4K display, and it looks just gorgeous. Are there two different speaker systems? Because I notice here we don't see speakers. Here we see this nice chrome grill down here. Exactly. So I've, I actually have down-firing speakers on this. So I have twin down-firing uh, down speakers. And on this one, we have it presented out towards the front. So really sort of for the professional, for the home. And how much should we jump in price from the roughly 800 to this guy? Sure. So this one goes with, with the touchscreen, with the Android um, operating system, I go up to 1199 That is really amazing. And the same time frame for this? So this will be out in the April time frame as well. Beautiful. Guys, can you help me carry this? <laughs> Oh, I guess not. If you watched last year's special, you probably remember this man, Mr. Sean Liu, the, the Lenovo person who introduced us to this. Yeah. This is their tablet, their wonderfully large tablet, 27 inches of Windows 8 goodness, yeah. but they've increased the capabilities to something that I, I really like. Sean, could you please uh, show us this uh, on, on top of there? Yeah, of course. So when you drop any Android phone running the Aurora app, it automatically recognizes that you've put the phone down, it's synchronizing with it, and it's going to grab all the photos from that phone and make them available on your desktop. See, I, I, I can just bring them out. Now, here's here's something else I like. I can use my use the phone as a controller. All I have to do is start shaking, and the photos from the phone start to fall out. And now I can start doing everything from editing. I can I can change them. I can annotate them, or if I want, I could just make them. I'll go away. Now, this is one of these additional capabilities that we were hoping we would see in this line of tablets, because we know that 27 inches is, is a little outrageous. But if they can give us this kind of functionality, if they could put this on every coffee table in America, maybe this is what you're going to come home to. Yeah. If you've been watching the Twit TV network, you're probably a fan of our drop cams. They're nice little gadgets that let you see everything. 
But one of the problems with the drop cam is that it's always using your external connection. It needs that connection to drive the bits to an external server, which can be problematic, especially if you're living in an area with poor internet connectivity. Which is why it's nice that Samsung has their new smart cam HDs. Now this is the HD and the HD Pro. The HD even looks a little bit about like a drop cam, but the difference is how they store the images. Both of these do 1080p, both of them will stream 20 frames a second to your device or 30 frames a second to an internal memory card, but that's the rub. It has an internal memory card, which means you can lose your external connectivity and keep recording what's going on inside. Not only that, each one of them has an embedded server, which allows your client to scrub through the timeline. Anything that's been recorded, you can see in real time. I think we're going to see these products take off because, well, anything that allows me to keep a nice eye on everything that I'm protecting without worrying about my internet connectivity is going to be a good thing. You might be asking yourself what NPR is doing at CES. I mean, NPR is considered to be more of a traditional company, a media company, a radio company. But here at CES, they're showing off their Nipper One. This is an interesting device out of NPR Labs. Quite simply, it's radio for the deaf. That's right, it, you, you heard me right, radio for the deaf. NPR Labs started with a device that would do closed captioning. This one is specifically designed for those, one of those 50 million Americans who can't hear who are in areas that could be affected by disasters. What the Nipper One does is it locks in to the local radio station and it starts decoding the FEMA information that could tell you if a disaster is coming. Is there a storm? Do you have to worry about temperature? Do you have to worry about flooding? And then this little box, which uh, came through because of some designs from Cantina, allows you to hook up, say, a bed shaker to rouse you out of bed or little alerts and alarms that the deaf person would be able to hear. Now this is just the tip of the iceberg for NPR Labs. I'm sure we're going to see more and more designs that bring their high quality program to all of America. Having tech is great. Playing with tech is greater. Losing tech, not so much with the good stuff. That's why we're here at Tracker. They're showing off a couple of devices for those people who might be a little, well, let's just say tech forgetful. In front of me, I've got the sticker tracker and the, this is the wallet tracker. Both of these devices are Bluetooth LE, very low power. In fact, the smaller device will last for six months. The larger device will last for a year. And what they let me do is to jack certain devices. I could jack my wallet, I could jack my keys, I could jack that little device that I carry around with me that I always seem to put down at the worst possible time. And then if I lose it, it will actually tell me not just that I've walked away, but also show me the last place that it knew where it was. Uh, this is an incredibly cool product and it's not that expensive. $29 for the first device, $39 for two devices, or $80 for four devices. So it's something that you're gonna buy in bulk to protect all the little gizmos and gadgets that you might have in your inventory. One other cool thing about this is once you've realized that you've lost your gear and you're going back and you're using the Mac to find it, you want to be able to know exactly where it is once you get in the vicinity, which is why it has this cool button for sounding the alarm, which does this. There you go. That's actually, I know it doesn't sound really loud because this is a very loud hall, but it's actually a very cool way to make sure that you can always find your lost check. Check this out. It's the tracker. You got to have it. Now that is a quadcopter. You may have seen them. They're all the rage. I'm here with Michael Perry. Michael, tell me, this is with DJI. What, what are you holding here? So this is an aerial system, and we use these for photography and video for any type of consumer, whether it be families on vacation or professional photographers. Now, the amazing thing is that not too long ago, these were toys, right? And you bought a couple of them. Maybe, maybe you used them for a while before they broke. Now you're actually attaching payloads to them. And I think this thing has a, a flight time of 25 minutes. What, what accounts for the rapid advancement of that kind of technology? A lot of research and development. Uh, um, our team has been working really hard at making this simpler, more affordable, and easier to fly. All right, now let's break it down, because I know you have a couple of different models here. You've got one that comes with, this looks like a gyro-stabilized GoPro camera. You've got one that has a, a camera of your own making. Guide me through the capabilities and the price points. 
So what I'm holding right now is the Phantom 2. And this comes with a uh, gimbal that stabilizes a GoPro camera. And with a gimbal, this is $869. The Phantom 2 Vision has a camera that we've developed in-house, and that's already attached to it. It's 14 megapixels, 1080p, and it, the camera can actually be controlled from your smartphone, even when it's up in the sky. So take pictures, record video, set aperture, all of those things. Um, and this costs uh, $1,199. I got asked, because I've always wondered about this. I, I, I mean, I want to fly one of these. I want to have one of these. This is like the ultimate RC kit. But I'm always worried about, well, what happens if I start to run out of battery? What happens if, if the drone is too far away for me to make it back? Am I going to destroy my new $1,100 drone because I was an idiot and enjoying it too much? Well, thankfully not. Uh, we've designed a GPS system that goes inside this so that um, both for, uh, it has a return to home function, so it knows where it launched from. So if the battery dies, or if something happens to your remote control, it will go back to the point that it launched from. Same thing when it goes out of range. Okay, Michael, these are cool. I mean, really, seriously, cool. I, I, Leo, could I, could I buy one of these, please? If, if that doesn't happen, I know that right now our audience is staring behind us going, wait, what's that, what's that big black carbon fiber looking thing behind us? Tell me a little bit about this. So this is the S1000. This is a model that's going to be coming out later this quarter. This is an eight rotor system, so it has even more lift and precise controls. As you can see, it has a gimbal that's a stabilizer that's used for, can for large professional cameras. This one is specifically designed for the Canon 5D series. Now, if they want to find out more about DJI, more about what you do, more about, well, just the, the cool gear that you've got, where should they go? Come visit us on our website, DJI.com. We also are on Facebook and on Twitter. Hey, Dick, do you ever have trouble sleeping? Uh, you know, I have a surefire way. I just turn on your podcast in about three minutes. Wonk, I am out. Now, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. But what if I were to tell you that there, were way would, there was a way to combine the boringness of my podcast with some scientific sleep stuff? Specifically the stuff that NASA designed for its astronauts. What? Exactly, exactly. That, that's why we're here. That, this white things thing? Yeah, okay. You know, I thought this was part of a ship. You know, it looks like that funnel. That, what, what is this? Evidently, you know a lot about this. Yeah, okay. So what NASA found out was that when you have astronauts who don't have, like, the sun and the moon to tell them when it's time to sleep or wake, you need something else to trigger those parts of the brain that help you to, well, fall asleep or wake up. Wow. So why don't they have the sun and the moon? Aren't they closer to it than anybody? Yeah, but they get it like every 10 minutes. That's, oh, that's oh, 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 very, okay. Yeah, that's, but what we can do. Something here. Yeah, CES, it's not just for gadgets anymore. <laughs> now, what okay. we've got here is we've actually got a way for you to trigger the part of your brain that is responsible for sleep. When it turns red, when it gets deeper, deeper red, it's actually triggering that piece of your brain that says, look, go ahead and start shutting everything down. And then when it turns blue that and gets brighter and brighter blue, that tr triggers a part of your brain that says it's time to get up and be active. It doesn't measure how much brain you have, right? Uh, I hope not. Otherwise it would never light up. Uh, exactly. Okay. I I'd be in trouble. Yeah. Well, both of us. Okay. Yeah. No, but what else it will do is, you see this little pad thing here? Yeah. Well, is that to wake you if you wet yourself at night? This goes underneath your mattress, and it allows a device to be able to determine what kind of sleep patterns you're in. Are you in deep sleep? Are you in light sleep? Are you ready to wake up? And then you can set the alarm clock so that when it's time to wake up, it will interrupt your sleep cycle after the end of that light sleep so you get that, that rested feeling. Now, i got to ask you this. Have you ever slept a long time, but you wake up and you're like, wait a minute, why am I still tired? Yes, absolutely. I've had that happen a lot. Well, the reason why that happens is because you're in the wrong sleep cycle. you got to wake up after light sleep. I've woken up and I've been in the wrong house, but this is different. Yeah. Okay. We're, we'll, have to, we'll, have to talk about, we'll have to talk about that. I'm here at the VWE booth showing you some creative use of Bluetooth LE. That's low energy edition of Bluetooth. Now, you have heard of the Philip Hue. This is like the same idea, but it doesn't use Wi-Fi. As you know, if you played with one of those, the biggest complaint has been that the Wi-Fi can be a little bit flaky. What BW is trying to do is to give a lower price version of an LED light that stays cool, that uses a minimum amount of power, but has a Bluetooth controller built into the base 
of the light. Now, there, this gives you a couple of advantages. First, it's very low power, but also it means that you can use it with their gateway line of products. They're going to be releasing things like this, which is an Ethernet gateway. They're going to have another one that allows you to put a GSM chip so that you can control it over the cellular network. All of these can combine with temperature and humidity sensors to give you complete control over your house, but with Bluetooth. Now, if you've got one of these at CES, you're probably saying, oh man, I'm not getting signal, I'm getting jammed, everything's so busy. Well, yes, those are definitely words that you could be using, but there's another word that Wilson wants you to use. Shut up. That's right, shut up and go do something about it. They've got a line of products that allow you to amplify your signal. This is the Wilson 4G Sleek. Now, just as the name implies, this thing will allow you to amplify any signal coming in on pretty much any carrier. You want to go 750, 800, 850, 1900? Absolutely, 3G, 4G Edge, that's what it's going to do. It's allowing you to make sort of a personal connection to your cell phone or say your, your MiFi, pretty much any device that uses a cellular signal. Now we saw this last year and we were pretty impressed, but they gave us something a bit bigger. That's right, this is coming out this year. This is the Wilson, I believe it's called the uh, DT, DT4G. the DT4G. What this will allow you to do is have a system inside your home or office and then an antenna outside and it essentially does the same thing as the 4G Sleek. It allows you to amplify the signal, giving your devices much more powerful signal. Inside this demonstration, we see exactly what Wilson's trying to do. This this is a Faraday cage. This copper mesh keeps all outside signals from getting in, which means that once it's inside the box, the only signal that can get to the device are the signals coming from the sleek. And as we saw every single time, your device stays wide. Now this is not just for those people who are really kind of anal about how many bars they have. It's for those people who want longer battery life, who want better qual quality, but of course, for those who want more speed. So. If you're tired of low signal, why not get some sleek? So you think you're using your phone the right way? No, I'm here at TrueCrypt with the president, Mark Parker. Mark, this is the future of typing? We think so. Okay, now, I don't want to be insulting or anything, but this looks like something that's huge. I'm not going to fit this into my pocket. Explain to me what this is. Yeah, so this is a rear type keyboard. We've got the uh, keys on the back side, which allows you to grip the device and actuate the keys at the same time. We did maintain the QWERTY key layout, so if I know how to type on a flat keyboard, I can learn how to do this in about 8 to 10 hours. So in addition to um, being a, if you're not a touch typist, we do have a map of the keys on the front side, so using hand-eye coordination, you can see the uh, representation of the key here and you're able to find it on the back side just using hand-eye coordination. Okay, let's run down some specs. How much battery life does it have? How quickly can you recharge? How does it connect to your device? Sure, so battery life, eight to 10 hours. Uh, takes about an hour or two to charge the device. Um, as far as connecting to a mobile phone or a, a tablet, we've got a space here in the middle. It's microsection technology and uh, uh, magnets that allow you to dock your device to it, holds it securely. Um, and then there's a Bluetooth connection that actually um, allows it to connect electronically. Okay, Mark, uh, this is going to sound insulting. I know, I'm sorry, but I got to ask. I can geek out to the tech. I like stuff like this because it's weird and it's kind of zany and I may find a cool use for it, but most of the people watching are going to say, why? Oh, why would I ever want something like this? What is this built for? Yeah, it's a great question. What we're finding is that the healthcare industry is very interested in this device. Um, it allows them to maintain that eye contact when they're working with patients versus standing over in the corner or sitting over in the corner or wheeling a cart into a patient's room. So um, it seems a little bit crazy, but that's the way uh, innovative technology is. If you've been a geek for a while, I know that the promise of an automated home has always been just out of reach. Well, maybe no longer. I'm here at the Lowe's booth with Mick Coster, who is the director of operations for Iris. Iris is their home automation system. Now, Mick, I gotta say, we've been promised a lot out of home automation. What makes this different? Well, that's true, but what we're really doing is trying to bring together all the different pieces that you would expect from a home improvement retailer, right? So the types of devices that you would see across our store 
door. So everyone does door locks, everyone does cameras, but now we're trying to bring in new devices. So devices such as a whole home shutoff valve. So put that on your main line, and now basically not only can I tie from a water leak detection, I can shut it off at the source. So stop the water leak before it ever happens. I love this. This is a flow meter, but I don't have to actually install it in, in the flow, right? It just goes right on top of the pipe. Right. It sits right on top of the pipe. It measures gallons per minute, and it can start to tell any leaks across your home just by snapping it on there. It's a sonic, sonic technology. We worked with a partner to help develop it. And now this one over here is a shutoff valve. You would actually would install this in line, and it would give you the ability to shut off either a main or an auxiliary pipe that you've got in your, in your building. Let's say it detects a leak. Yeah, exactly. So it gives you the remote capability to turn it on and off, and then when you tie it together with our water leak detectors, then basically, yeah, you can just do it automatically. And that you do have to cut in, because it's a valve, basically. Show me a little bit about how this works. Let, let's take me through an average home. Yeah, so this is Test Drive. This is our app, so you can download this. This is an example of how we display it in our retail stores. So there's obviously alarm functionality, right, where I can turn alarms on or off, uh, controls for any plugged-in device. Here's even that shutoff valve I talked about before, right, where I can open and close it. Um, thermostats as well. Um, you know, all those basic core functionalities. And then what else is new this year uh, we're bringing out is irrigation controls, so sprinkler systems. Simple, simple hose taps or 12-zone systems, right? I can actually remotely control that, put in rain delays, tie all those great t types of things together. So just another new product as well. All right, Mick, so now the, now the big question, when is all this stuff going to be available? Where do people find out about it, and how much is it going to cost? Yeah, so that's where I think Iris really shines, right? So it's available throughout Lowe's stores, and obviously Lowe's.com slash Iris, um, and it's it's affordable. It starts, our starter kits are at $179 um, for the uh, safe and secure, the comfort and control, and then basically there's no monthly fee, or there's a premium service as well for only $9.99 a month. So basically you can kind of get started right out of the gate, grow with you as we go, and then, you know, we're, we're, we're working together to bring more and more of our vendors already on board with this type of technology. Here at CES, we are surrounded by the highest of the highest tech. The latest tablet, notebook, mainframe computers that will melt your face off, high definition screens that are just more beautiful than real life itself. But do we believe that that's the future of entertainment? No, I don't think so. It's here at Stern Pinball. Hey, you know, sometimes you're Skyping with somebody, you're using FaceTime, you think you're talking face-to-face. -face. It turns out you're not talking face-to-face -to -face at all. I'm talking face-to-chest, to Padre. Well, there's a solution to that, and this is it. It's from Brookstone, and it's eye-to-eye. -eye. And tell us a little bit about eye-to-eye, -eye, Christine. Well, eye-to-eye -eye is sort of the uh, missing link in video chat technology. What we know about video chat right now is that when you use your iPad, a lot of times you're sort of doing this and you see the top of someone's head, you get that real flattering double chin effect that none of us women like too much. What we did is we created what we're calling the eye to eye booth. It's got a patented optical lens system inside of it. You simply slide your iPad tablet right inside, pop it up. And now, now we're using the, the cameras in the iPad. The camera is in the iPad, so literally this is just a booth. It's a shell. It's a casing for it. The secret sauce is in those optical lenses I told you about. And so what they do is they to redirect, without me doing anything, it's all hands-free magic, um, redirect the camera angles that are already part of the iPad. And then when I, I, I will be staring directly into the eyes of the other person. And they're seeing me with directly into the eyes, which of course... That's what communication's all about. That's really great. That's really great. And what's this going to retail for? It's going to retail for $149 at Brookstone in May. They're going to sell a two-pack for $249. So in the case of moms like me, one's going to grandma and grandpa, one's going to stay at my house, so we have a better experience with the grandkids. Have you ever heard the phrase, too much car and not enough driver? Well, here at Chevy, they're trying to correct that problem by making you a better driver with the car. They've outfitted a few of these, well, these are really, really nice cars with a performance performance system that gives you all the data that you might collect on your own. If you are one of these tuners, you've probably collected engine data that tells you what's going on with your brake and your throttle. This gives you one step further. Not only is it recording what's going on in front of your camera, uh, in front of your car, but it gives you where your weight distribution is. Are you dumping off the brake too quickly? Are you getting on the thr throttle too hard? It will give you your GPS position. It will give you your tachometer. It will give you what gear you're in, how much throttle you're using, and how much brake you're expressing. This is the sort of information that people will take after their lap, dump it into the computer, pull the little SD card out, and analyze how they were driving. And indeed, that might make you enough man 
for the machine. Now that's just a small sampling of what's going on here at CES Unveiled. Over the next couple of days, we're going to show you the best of the best of the best of the greatest geek on Earth. Stay tapped.